Now the stomach, it has all of this folds and these folds are called rugae. And actually rugae is a general term referring in anatomy to some sort of folds or some sort of bumpy lining in a surface. And that's what we see here. So notice that the entire, the stomach wall itself is not completely smooth. And why is that? It has all these substructures called gastric pits that are located in between the folds of these rugae. And what do they have? Well, these pits have a bunch of cells and different types of cells, and we will cover what type of cells are in these gastric pits. So let's look closer. So again, gastric pits, they open up towards the inside of the stomach, but they have a variety of different types of cells. Now what we have here are parietal cells, and parietal cells are very important because they produce a very important chemical involved in chemical digestion in the stomach. They produce HCl, or hydrochloric acid. So again, you may have heard of hydrochloric acid, especially when we first talk about the, um, was it, about pH. Hydrochloric acid is on the extreme end of the acidic, so it's very, 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 very acidic. So in terms of gastric acids, about, depends on the conditions and depends on the person, around one to three, a pH of one to, or about a pH of three. Then you have mucus cells, aka foveolar cells, aka surficus mucus cells, many different names. Thing is that they produce mucus, and notice that they're facing closely to, or they're face, they're located mostly toward the side that faces the inside of stomach. And there's a very important reason for that. We hopefully will get to cover this lecture, if not next week or next lecture. And then we have and why is it important to produce mucus so again that those parietal cells are cranking out hydrochloric acid very acidic but the, the thing is that not only does it digest your food it could potentially digest your stomach itself because again your stomach is made out of chemicals and cells and then this hydrochloric acid can also dissolve and all these chemicals and your cell membranes as well so gastric acid is very, very acidic. The pH around, yeah. So do I want you to know exact values for the pH? Not in terms of like an exact, I'm not gonna ask you, okay, um, like, like exact values to like the hundredth of a decimal point. You should just know that it's generally around this area. So again, I'm not going to be too specific on pH values, but yeah, it's very acidic. So if it was totally unprotected, like any sort of sheet of cells or membranes, if you threw gastric acid on it, it could dissolve this the, uh, sheet, a membrane of cells. Thing is that your mucus cells, they're very important because they provide a layer of mucus that helps to keep that gastric acid in check. So this mucus is actually a protective layer that prevents your own stomach's gastric acid from dissolving the tissues and inner linings of your stomach itself. So this is why it's very important that you have these mucus cells. Again, it's more the mucus is more than just the mucus you have in your your respiratory tract. It's also an important protective layer as well. So what would happen if your stomach didn't have mucus? I mean, it's like okay, it's like oh, I don't want I want to get rid of all the mucus in my body for whatever reason. What would happen to your stomach? Well, if you didn't have that mucus, remember that gastric acid. That's the only thing keeping it or not one of the things, major things keeping it from your gastric acid from dissolving your stomach itself. So without the, music, or the, without the mucus, the gastric acid can attack the inner linings of your stomach. And this is what can result from that. Ulcers can result from your gastric acid attacking the li inner linings of your stomach. So gastric acid is eating away against your stomach lining and this can cause something we call peptic ulcers or stomach ulcers. So again, yeah, peptic, uh, and actually that's, I forgot if I re covered this in previous um, lectures, but yeah, that prefix gastro is a very important term referring to the stomach. Also peptic tends to refer to the stomach. So whenever you have this kind of root word as well. And what we have here is that, yeah, oh, look at that. It's very like uh, pretty much a hole in the stomach from enzymes and gastric acid attacking the lining of the stomach and forming a swell sore here. So that's what happens there. And this is in the small intestine. If you have like ac excess acid here and not enough protection with mucus over here, you can also get ulcers that are downstream of the stomach as well. But yeah, this is both. these are both wounds to the lining of your GI tract. 
And this is a photograph of that. And look at that. Oh, that the rest of this pink one is this pink tissue is very healthy. But look at all this inflammation, all this like dead cells and possibly some immune cells there as well. So that's what an ulcer looks like if in real life. Yeah, very nasty. So it can also happen at the duodenum as well. Because again, that's the first part of the small intestine that receives the very acidic chyme mixture of both digestive food and gastric acid. All right, so what can cause peptic ulcers? Well, gastric acid, but also bacteria. So Helicobacter pylori, if you take in microbiology or nursing micro, you probably are familiar with this. And the interesting thing is that most infected people don't show symptoms. They're asymptomatic and it can ca cause these ulcers. How can it cause those ulcers? Well, look at this hel 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 Helicobacter pylori burrowing its way past the mu mucus and the mucin gels and trying to attack, yeah, so what's doing? Poking the holes and attacking that mucus lining. So with these H. pylori bacteria dissolving this mucus layer, this makes it more, pro well, one, these H. pylori can also attack the cells and lining of your stomach as well. So it makes your stomach more vulnerable to, to um, the gastric acids and also secretes its own chemicals as well. These proteases and toxins also attack the cells lining your stomach. And it's funny because like you may have heard this if you watch like the movie Contagion, which is very topical and it predicted so many of the things we're going through right now. So the thing is that the at first this was controversial. They thought ulcers were just caused by stress. They were just caused by ex excess acid in the stomach or a lack of mucus in the stomach. And this brilliant Australian scientist said like, hey, I'm pretty sure that this bacteria causes peptic ulcers as well. And to prove it, what he did is grew up all these bacteria in a flask in the lab. He actually swallowed it and ingested the bacterial culture with H. pylori. And he developed ulcers the next day. Now that is like violating so many lab rules, but he believed in the science so much that he, he actually used himself as a test subject and show, gave himself ulcers to say like, hey, you can't have bacteria that ca bacterial cause ulcers. And he won a Nobel Prize for that too. Look it up. Now, you may have heard this like like in terms of like I think there were some pack back questions on this, and you may have heard this from your like family or especially oh I'm so stressed I'm gonna develop ulcers or I'm so stressed like this stress this job is gonna give me ulcers or this whole pandemic and everything is giving me ulcers. Well, first let's define stress. What do you mean by stress? Are you talking about physical physiological or mental stress or is it some change in your body or is it mental stress like and or but again is there a clear delineation between the two well we also have our general adaptation syndrome as well so again what is stress what's the cause of the mental stress and it's interesting that mental health problems are associated with peptic ulcers but you can also have physiological things like, again, you can have things that affect the chemistry of your body or the amount of mucus you produce. And or you can have things like H. pylori, which are, is a bacteria, a pathogen that's acti actively affecting the linings and mucus layer in your stomach. All right, so mucus is more than just slimy stuff. It's actually a very important, that's a protective layer for your stomach. All right, then you have chief cells, and chief cells, notice that you have them all over your gastric, inner part of your gastric pits. So they secrete a very important enzyme called pe pepsinogen, or protein called pepsinogen. Or a quick question, can't mental stress cause an increase in stress hormone that leads to physical stress and then lead to ulcers? So yeah, that's an interesting thing too, is like, is remember our gen whole general adaptation syndrome and you have things like epinephrine or epinephrine and cortisol. So cortisol, I mean, very important. It affects, targets so many different cells. And that's one thing, can, if it starts to affect the production of mucus or if it starts to affect the production of stomach acid, that can also cause things as well. So yeah, stress hormones can affect it, but it's like when you talk about stress, Think of, you have to kind of say like, okay, what type of stress are we talking about? Are we talking about general mental disorders, like in that first paper? We're talking about acute the acute stress, like seen in the general adaptation syndrome? Are we talking more long-term? Are we talking about specific 
chemicals or pathogens. So it's like, yeah, that's what it means. Like, so stress can cause ulcers, but what stress are you talking about? Well, again, define what's causing the stress. What's the stress being to, what's particular stress is being applied to the body?